Joining us tonight is singer-songwriter Seth Aaron, a very interesting individual who plays both guitar and piano and defies most labels others try to stick on him. Let's give him a round of applause. Seth Aaron, everybody. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about what your music style is, or uh, give us some, give us like five words that you describe your style. Oh man, it, it's eclectic. If you had to only use one word to describe yeah. it, I mean. It, well, we asked for five. Okay, yeah. well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, a couple years ago, you ask any aspiring musician what their what their style is, and they can give you a a genre. They'd say pop, or they'd say rock, or they'd say reggae, or something like that. Nowadays, if you ask a aspiring musician what their style is, that you're going to get a story. You know, what I mean, you're going to say, "Well, I grew up on Motown, and I was listening to to you know the Temptations and stuff like that." And then in high school, I started listening to Metallica, and then and it's starting to get really hard to describe sounds. But I guess uh, for me, uh, what I try to do is is make a combination of all the things that I love, and that's uh, you know naturally, that's a lot of different things. So. Um, my sound is a combination of anything from, from Lenny Kravitz to Maroon 5 to Jason Mraz to Bill Withers. I can only imagine your parents' reaction as you went from The Temptations to Metallica. <laughs> They're probably like, where did we go wrong? <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't normal. Um, well, you know, your musical style is obviously varied. And um, you mentioned in your bio, and here are some of your varied interests, uh, Starbucks, Jesus, chill music, and sushi. Which I find that Jesus and sushi go really well together. I like to do the. Um, <laughs> Jesus you know. goes good with everything. <laughs> and um, you know, how, how do these impact your attitude toward life and toward your music? Sort of, you know, your various interests. <laughs> um, it's a good question. I mean, uh, Starbucks is kind of the fuel that keeps me going. I think other people would agree with me on that. But uh, um, that <laughs> that quote right there definitely. Uh, the main thing that sticks out to that to me is is Jesus and and. Uh, my uh, my faith is really what drives the majority of, of well, not even the majority, but everything that I, I do. I try to I try to pull from from that, and what I what I feel like is uh, the reason I'm I'm here, and the reason I was gifted to do music in the first place. Um, so, uh, as far as how how chill music, sushi, and Starbucks, they they all uh, they all kind of pale in comparison to the influence that Jesus has on me. You know, Seth, I think that you bring up a really great point, and just having some sort of faith to believe in, getting you through, um, obviously your music, you you take to Jesus and to your religion to guide you through, and I think, you know, as you know, we always say on transitions, um, we're always focusing on everyone's transition phases, whether it be from, uh, like, mus you know, making music in their basement to singing on stage, or from making a resume in their basement and getting a job. Um, you know, you got to have something that pulls you through and keeps you going. That's a pretty good insight, and I'm continually surprised by all the guests we have on this show of, uh, of how young we all are, um, A, putting on this radio show and the guests we bring on, but just that kind of insight from you know, such a young voice. And that's one reason we kind of continue to do transitions as well. I think everybody can agree that uh, because we all have something to say, we all have an opinion to voice. So that's pretty cool. I'd do it for the cookies yeah, that you put in the videos, yeah. but I mean, right. everyone has their vices. Uh, Seth, to speak of uh, to speak on some of your more secular activities here, uh, I want you to tell us about your boy band experience with uh, a little act called Danger Us. Oh yeah, Danger dot US. I'm sorry, dash US. Danger dash, Us. Yeah, a dash there. Uh, which some <laughs> yeah, might right. dismiss this as shameless pop music, although you said the group didn't actually sound all that bad. Um, tell us, Seth, are there any redeeming sides to the experience in Danger Us? There are all kinds of redeeming. Uh, sides to that. Um, I mean, how easy is it to like the same kind of music that that everybody else likes, and how easy is it to like uh, a kind of music that uh, you know what is going to give you a hard time for liking? Um, I mean, when we all start really getting into music and developing who, what our favorite sound is um, at a specific age, and and when I started really getting into music and what my favorite music was, boy bands were really popular and. Uh, in junior high and high school, you know, weren't too many uh, guys that were openly willing to admit that they liked boy bands, and so we all kind of flocked together. And then we realized that there were five of us, and we were all wearing matching clothes. So we were like, all right, this just, this just is, is destiny. I, I mean, I think boy bands are fantastic. I loved them in high school. Heck, I would have been a part of one if you know, <laughs> I was a boy. Well, I started kind of noticing a trend, uh, and. I guess it started with uh, a couple of years back. I started looking at just band names in general and just saying, like, wow, like, if 
you can come up with a random word and a random number and just put it together. <laughs> uh, but you have a perfectly good band name. And I'm like, man, there is a lot of similarities in music. And you, and you can't avoid similarities. I mean, no nobody was really, as far as music goes, nobody was the first one to do anything. Music wasn't invented. Music didn't really start somewhere. It was always around. And so you can't avoid the similarities. What I'm referring to when I'm talking about cookie cutterism is, is um, you start to notice not I, I really can't point a finger at anybody because there's a lot that I don't know but but uh, you start to notice when people seem like they're they're taking their image or what they want to appear to be as an artist and it's almost like they're picking it out of a catalog they're like all right this is hot right now this is what I'm going to be or this is what I'm gonna mold myself behind um, and they just decided to do it that way and I, and I think that we as as music lovers and I know that we all love music as music fans, um, I think that we in, in enable um, up-and-coming artists to really s become complacent in, in, in how and how they develop their music. And, and I love the fun, catchy stuff, and I love the, uh, the, the easy, easy listening stuff that gets stuck in your head, but um, less and less you're seeing, um, Less and less you're seeing people actually pouring their heart and soul into telling stories with their music and and um, talking about their life and their love and, and their passion and stuff like that. It's more about buying you a drink and cherry chapstick and California stuff like that. Girls. There you go. Um, and so I really that's that's the way I'm I'm trying to differ in, in that I'm I'm really telling stories with all of my songs and and, and writing from life and I'm trying to really uh, at least make the first, I guess not the first step, but make a step in, in going back to that place that we were not that long ago when families would, would after dinner, they would come around to radio and listen to music. This first one is the title track off that record. It's called Heart Condition. Chest, I get this kind of shooting pain. Peeps up inside me now and again, especially when she's on my mind. When it starts to pierce, it hurts something fierce, and I can't make it go away. It chills and it burns while my stomach turns and tosses aside. But I just ignore how much it hurts But I'm afraid that it just made things worse Cause ever since I've been without her Without her, especially when I think about her About her, I get this pain inside Doctor, what's the diagnosis? There must be some kind of prescription, prescription that can cure my heart condition, condition. Cause it don't feel right, and I think it might be broken. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you suggest? Cause I'm kind of desperate for some kind of remedy. A pills or a shot, whatever you got, then might ease the pain. Oh, if you determine this terminal urgent emergency just might be the end of May. Oh, then do what you will and send me the bill, whatever it takes. Oh, ever since I've been without her, it's best thing when I think about her, about her. I get this pain inside, Doctor. What's the diagnosis? There must be some kind of prescription, prescription that can cure my heart condition, condition. Cause it don't feel right, and I think it might be broken. Yeah. 
think it might be broken. This song was written at a Starbucks, um, and it was at Starbucks that this song kind of wrote itself. This is the first song I ever wrote um, where the music came to me before the lyrics did. Um, I was actually just kind of playing the chords, and I didn't know what to write about, so I wrote about not knowing what to write about. This song is called Writer's Black. <coughs> I'm at the neighborhood hot spot, trying to unwind six string on my knee, music on my mind, chilling, lost in the rhythm of a night, I never find my way. Ideas about the dozen and before they lost, I'm trying to show a bad case, your writer's block who's boss, but all I got is a pen full of ink and an empty page. I know I want a rhythm that lifts your spirit, makes you want to turn it up when you hear it. Knew where I wanted to end up, I just didn't know where to start. To the little cutie peeking over my shoulder Asked me what I'm working on, so I told her It's just a song going nowhere fast And then she asked if she could hear what I had so far <laughs> I said I'll take a little funky four for rhythm A little bass line And we'll give them something they can slide into that system And play it loud Open up the car door, step inside Hey, you never knew the world could sound so tight And I'll show you what a song that was meant for writing is all about what it's all about, oh. I hate to get hands steady digging, now she makes me feel cruising through G's out, trying to keep it real, tap to something kind of funky on the steering wheel, like a boom. I hear a bass drum every time I tap my feet, and my turn signal just happens to be on beat. I'm leaning back in my seat, not in my head while the heat from the high beats burning up the concrete. Suddenly my heart beats metronomic, the chaos in my mind is so chaotic. Something funky's going on to try to figure out what it is. Maybe it was just my imagination. It's like the whole world's in syncopation. And just like that, a tune was born and it goes a little something like this. I'll take a little funky four for rhythm, a little bit of bass line. And we'll give them something they can slide into that system and play it loud. Open up the car door, step inside it. You never knew the world could sound so tight. And I'll show you what a song that was meant for writing is all about. I'm gonna try something a little daring here. Very superstitious Riding on the wall Very superstitious Oh, that was about to fall Thirteen month old baby Broke the looking glass Oh, 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 oh. Seven years of bad luck The good things in your past Do you believe in things That you don't understand Then you suffer Superstition ain't the way Superstition ain't the way Hey, yeah We'll take a little funky four for rhythm, a little bit of bass line, and we'll give them something they can slide into that system and play it loud. Open up the car door, step inside, and you never knew the world could sound so tight. And I'll show you what a song that was meant for writing is all about. Oh, show you what it's all about now.